In this extension exercise for Module 4, we bring together some of the concepts we've introduced in the first four modules and ask you to look in some detail at an example of where a system engineering approach would have been of some assistance. In particular, we ask you to use the construction of the Walkie Scorchy building in London as a case study and to suggest where some areas of system engineering may not have been followed as closely as they could have been, well, at least as the issues have been reported in the media. In London, it's common to give names to the various buildings, particularly the modern ones, based on their shape. There's the Shard of Glass, the Razor, and so on. The Walkie Scorchy Tower is a building constructed which was originally called the Walkie Talkie due to the shape of the 37-storey building. Now, one of the consequences of the shape of that building was that it resulted in a 37-storey concave mirror, which focused the reflection of solar rays into a focal point that then was on the, on the street floor, providing in excess of 70 degrees Celsius temperature. One of the consequences of the shape of the building was that it resulted in a 37-storey concave mirror, which focused the reflection of solar rays into a focal point when it, when it was on the ground, which was in excess of some 70 degrees Celsius. Consequently, the media started calling it the Walkie Scorchy Building, not the Walkie Talkie Building. Now this reflection actually had been uh, recognised in earlier designs, and the effect had been mitigated by the use of fins, which reduced the solar reflections from each of the panes of glass. Now for media reports, the fins were removed to reduce the cost of the building as a result of the financial climate at the time of its development. So based on reports in the media, there's evidence to suggest that the system design is new, that the solar reflection would be a problem. So at some point in the early design, there was a requirement to introduce fins to reduce the reflection of the solar rays, that is to stop it from becoming a mirror, to, to have some sort of diffuse reflection on, off, off, the, off the windows. Subsequently though, these fins were removed to help reduce the cost of the building. Now as you have seen in the course, it's important to document a rationale as why a requirement is in place. The designers may have documented a rationale with the requirement for the fins for, for the windows, but it doesn't seem to have been taken into account when the cost savings were identified. Now when they were considering the removal of the fins to reduce the cost, some reports say that the developers knew it might have been an issue, but didn't think it would be that bad. Now clearly, conducting early testing, whether it's via simulation or prototyping, may have been able to provide a more realistic estimation of the resultant temperature and highlight the importance of keeping the fins or finding an alternate solution to reduce the solar reflections. In later modules, we'll point out to you the importance of change control or change management. Now it's provided throughout the system engineering effort to make sure that if we make changes, they're applied consistently. As problems are solved during the analysis, synthesis and evaluation loop, the problem of reducing costs, the impact of other elements of the design, need to be considered. By conducting this assessment and recognising the risk of removing the fins, perhaps other areas of the design could have been changed instead to reduce the cost with least risk. When designers did decide to remove the fins from the design, did they actually then flow the effects of those changes back up the requirements tree in a requirements traceability sense? If there was a high level requirement which required the minimisation of solar reflections, and that was purely satisfied by having the fins in place in the lower level part of the design, a reasonable change control process should have identified that removing the fins would have had an undesirable effect on that higher level requirement. Now similarly, system engineering focuses on the whole of life cycle, which in turn results in life cycle cost savings. It's important to realise in this example that a reduction in acquisition costs didn't lead to a cost and savings overall, particularly since the attempt to save costs affected the original design to the extent that significant effort had to be undertaken to rectify the errors that resulted. Well, we hope you enjoyed the Module 4 extension exercise. As you'll have seen, there's much to be achieved by a more careful approach in identifying needs and requirements and then managing those requirements throughout the life of a system.